What is going on ladies and gentlemen? I got a special video for you today. We are going to be hatching some killifish eggs. Supplies you're going to need are a mason jar or medicine bottle, a magnifying glass so you can see the eyes, something to pick the eggs out with, and of course killifish eggs. Other supplies you're going to need besides these here are brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp are fantastic for new fry, and microworms. So now that we've got all of our supplies, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and inspect the eggs to make sure that they're eyed up. These have been on peat since 628. Here it is August 8th and they are definitely ready. Many of them should be eyed up. I'm zooming in here. You can see the small brown orbs. I'm going to be pointing at them with my knife tip here just so you can get a better look at them. These are the eggs you're going to want to inspect. I got these eggs from Mike Epp at the Triple Crown Convention in Louisville, Kentucky. The magnifying glass is here trying to help. So if you have a hard time seeing, you can kind of see those eggs right there. Doesn't work the greatest under camera, unfortunately, but you can kind of zoom in and see. And if you look at this egg here, you see a tiny little black shadow up at the top there. That was the eyes that you're going to be looking for to know that the killifish are ready. Here's another zoomed in view. You can see the killifish egg sitting on top of the peat. The egg directly in the center there that I'm pointing my knife tip to, those have eyes. You can indicate the eyes by the dark blotches within the egg. So now that we've confirmed that our killifish eggs are eyed up and ready to hatch, we're going to go ahead and use the, the mason jar slash medicine bottle method. Uh, this method is a little more in-depth than the bowl method, which we are going to show you later. What you have to do is you have to go through and selectively pick out each egg uh, and then drop them into the mason jar. The mason jar or medicine bottle that you're using, you'll want to have the same water in that that you're going to have in the grow out tank. You only need to fill the medicine bottle or mason jar one third to one quarter full. So now it's time to pick out some eggs. I have one egg on the tip here and I just bang it down into the cup. Here's another one. Um, with picking up eggs, uh, they are rather tough and durable, you know, obviously you know, if you're using tweezers, you want to go pretty light on it. The reason I used a knife here uh, is because I thought it would help more with everyone watching this see what we were we are doing. But later on in the video, uh, after we did a couple examples of selecting the eggs and putting them down into the jar, we did go and actually use tweezers, which made everything a lot easier. I would say. Uh, if you are doing this your own and you have like a decent practice on picking up eggs and things of that nature, go with tweezers. Uh, it does make life a lot easier. You can see here in the video, I was fighting it just a little bit with trying to get them onto the end of the knife tip. Another thing uh, I did was wet the knife tip. It did help the eggs stip stick a lot better. But overall, I would say the tweezers were a lot easier, especially if you're going through and picking out the eggs individually to hatch in a medicine bottle or a mason jar. At this point, we have already gone through, probably picked out roughly like 10 or 12 eggs. I think we pick out a couple more, uh, but I'm not going to bore everyone with that. Uh, we did use the wet knife mixed with tweezers towards the end just to kind of help pick the eggs up and make it go a little bit quicker. Trying to zoom in here on an egg, but the camera's not working. So, you know how it is. Gotta love technology. Let's move on to the next step. So now that we have the eggs in the mason jar, what we want to do next is blow air into the mason jar and put the lid on as fast as physically possible. This helps the CO2 stay trapped inside the jar and helps to hatch the eggs. The second method is the bowl method. Bowl method is a little less in-depth compared to the medicine bottle or mason jar method. 
to where you don't have to go through and individually pick out eggs. You can kind of just like group dump the eggs into the bowl and then fill them up with aquarium water. I went ahead and set up an air pump. What this air pump is going to do is it's going to help to break up any of that peat that stays up on the surface. Breaking up the surface peat also helps to detach the eggs so that they be can become free of the peat and also sink to the bottom to where you have less of a likelihood of scooping them out when you go ahead and clean the top surface of that peat. Now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of adding some water into the petri dish to make sure I don't have eggs and then filling up the bowl about one third full with aquarium water. I'm just going ahead and just splashing the water in there. You can see it's really turbulent and now I'm turning on the air pump. The air pump isn't open all the way because I'm not trying to scramble the baby fry but what I am trying to do is create a turbulent nature to where it helps to jostle the peat, break up those oxygen particles that are stuck inside the peat and continue to separate the eggs from the peat. Here you can see I had a few eggs that were stuck to the lid so I'm just going ahead and using tweezers to put those into the bowl. I'm going to take the air hose here and slowly move it around in the peat, helping to dislodge any eggs that may be stuck to the peat, also helping to kind of break that peat apart a little bit better. And I'm going to do this for a couple minutes here. I'm not going to have you all sit through and just watch me breaking up the peat. But you can see I don't have the valve open all the way on the uh, flow restrictor, but I do have it opened about three quarters to where those bigger bubbles are hitting the peat particles and helping to disperse them and break them apart. Because both of the bowl and the mason jar methods that we used are not going to be checked on until the next morning, uh, I went ahead and I put some microworms in with the bowl and here I am after thoroughly agitating the peat. Uh, confident that I don't have any other eggs in there. I'm straining off of the chunks of peat. What I am going to do is actually set this peat aside and go through it later on to look to see if there are any eggs that didn't come attached from the peat. Uh, just to make sure. The reason I'm removing the top layer of peat here is just to make it easier to see uh, the majority of the eggs that might hatch. As we zoom in here you can see some of the eggs on the bottom of the screen. Kind of trying to move it around to show you more of the eggs but reflections of the light and movement of the peat aren't always the most friendly. If you look in the left hand gradient of the screen here you can see some eggs that are on the bottom of the bowl. And as we zoom in you'll see that some of the first fry have started to hatch less than 10 minutes after we've stopped the agitation. They're only about, I'd say, maybe a quarter inch long, if that. Very translucent, and the eyes are reflective, so it makes it somewhat easy to find. Morning has come, and I'd say we have a pretty good hatch ratio. This is the bowl method. You can see that there are plenty of fry. Uh, initial count before adding was around 26 fry. Here is the mason jar method and we have a 100% hatch ratio on 18. So now the fun part begins. We get to suck the fry up and transfer them from the bowl to the mason jar. I'm using a turkey baster here. Uh, you can also use a pipette if you have one large enough. Unfortunately I did not because I find out that it, uh, the turkey baser is not subtle at all, and it, uh, just, it'll suck everything up. I mean, I sucked four or five fry up at the same time, but I also sucked up a bunch of the peat, which I had to go back through later on and clean, and it, it wasn't the most precise tool for the job, but at the end of the day, it did get it done. I'm not going to show you all of the fry that I sucked up. I did end up, uh, sucking up about 33 fry. The one important thing to remember, though, is 
with some of these eggs, they may not be fully developed. So you want to leave the bowl afterwards and you don't want to dump it out. You want, you want it to sit for another couple days. You can put, put an air stone back on it, whatever you'd like. At the time of me filming this right now, I still have the bowl uh, sitting on the kitchen counter where I filmed me sucking the fry up this morning and I actually have two more fry that managed to hatch. Uh, so don't give up on the peat. Keep it for another couple days. Some eggs may still mature and hatch out for you. And here are all the fry that we have collected. They've been transferred over into the mason jar. And now I'm going to take this mason jar into the grow out tub. Let the water acclimate and slowly uh, add some water in and out. That way we don't cause any shock. Now it's time to acclimate and add the fry into the grow out tub. First, I'm setting the jar into the water. I don't heat any of the water. There's no reason to. Our back room has uh, reptiles and things of that nature, and it stays around 72 to 74. Sometimes it gets a little hotter, but those temperatures are pretty consistent. What I'm doing is I'm adding some drops of water into the jar from the grow out tub just to kind of help acclimate the fry a little bit better to the conditions i'm going to do this two times i'm going to do this uh the first initial time here and then i'm going to wait a half an hour and then go back and add some more drop to the jar so that they can fully be acclimated while the fry are acclimating i'm going ahead and i'm getting a big gob full of microworms here and i'm going to add it to the grow out bin there are microworms in the jar, but I figured uh, add a couple more into here. They usually fall in one large clump, so I like to swirl them around. That way it kind of helps get them spread out across. And You can see as I zoom in here how well they stay in the water column. So now that they've finished acclimating, I'm going to go ahead and dump them in. Uh, this tote is a 20 liter shoebox tote that I got from Walmart. I've got it filled about halfway, so it's roughly two and a half gallons of water. I'm going to keep the water level at two and a half gallons for a little while until they get to about a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, and slowly raise the water level. I hope everyone has enjoyed this. I know this isn't my usual video, but if you like these kinds of videos, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Hope everyone's staying healthy and happy. Gotta go. Gotta grow.